its face shed its light upon us and have mercy on us. No. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we gather this evening for this Mass of the Lord's Supper, recalling Jesus' Last Supper, the institution of the Eucharist and Holy Orders, the Eucharist that is not a moment in history, but a lived reality, that we are with Jesus in this wonderful way, even in the celebration of this Eucharist this evening, and always he is with us, to prepare ourselves to celebrate that encounter, the sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins and ask forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. shall cease day o
let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat it, eat its roasted flesh, with unleavened bread and bittered herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God.
I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. thanksgiving sacrifice, I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord. 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, and fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. He rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over, so that you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, gave thanks, broke it. This is my body that is for you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. And as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, 
You proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. St. Paul recalls the institution of the Eucharist, the Last Supper, what we celebrate tonight, the beginning of what continues, what is a lived reality for us as Christians, the real presence of Jesus with us in the Eucharist. Every time, we're told, every time we celebrate this mystery, we proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. That gift of Jesus, he gives himself to us. This is my body, which is for you. That's something that we receive in the Eucharist always, and that Jesus is eager to give his love and mercy to us all the time. As Christians, we we seek to center ourselves on that reality. We need to be immersed in it. The giving over of himself was prefigured in the story of the Exodus. And we hear that powerful story in the first reading this evening. Jesus becomes the Lamb of God, the one who brings salvation, who gives himself for the sacrifice. He becomes the Lamb of the sacrifice. You we heard the story of the first Passover. We hear that, that story so familiar to us of how the, the Lamb itself would become the means by which the children of Israel are saved. We're told that the lamb was slaughtered in the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. And the protection that would come to them because of the lamb saves their lives. St. John Chrysostom recalled this situation, this context of the Exodus. In these words, he said, in those days when the destroying angel saw the blood on the doors, he did not dare to enter. So how much less will the devil approach now when he sees not the figurative blood on the doors, but the true blood on the lips of believers the doors of the temple of Christ. It is Jesus' blood on the lips of believers that saves us. We are redeemed through his precious body and blood, just as the children of Israel were saved by the blood of the Lamb on their doorposts. The the true blood on the lips of believers, the doors of the temple of Christ. It's It's important that we ponder this, and we certainly do during these days of the Triduum, to to ponder this gift of God that's beyond imagining, but yet very personally to each one of us. We claim that salvation, that redemption through Jesus, and every time we celebrate the Eucharist, he gives himself again. How could we ever treasure that or appreciate it enough? As we heard in the psalm, how How shall I make a return to the Lord? What should I do? The cup of salvation I will take up. I will call upon the name of the Lord. How could I ever possibly repay him? Jesus doesn't ask for repayment. He asks, though, he invites us to receive him so intimately and so personally that we're transformed by the Eucharist, that we become that which we consume, as St. Augustine said that we literally are transformed little by little over the course of our lives into the likeness of Jesus, to have his vision, his priorities. This is played out in the gospel tonight in a, in a very vivid way, the story, of course, of the washing of feet. Jesus is, we, we, traditionally, of course, everyone looks at this as an example of leadership, servant leadership right? That the leader must be the servant. Jesus has said that. He said it again. If you want to be first, you've got to be willing to be last. He who humbles himself will be exalted. He who exalts himself will be humble. That image 
of leadership, and he models it perfectly. But there is something there, too, that's transformative. He's not only showing the apostles how they are to lead, but he's giving himself in that action, that he is actually offering himself. It always strikes me when I pray over this scene of the washing of the feet, how how vulnerable Jesus makes himself in that scene. Certainly, he he breaks through the the norms, the the decorum, the the role of the rabbi. This, This would never happen. This is an unspeakable sort of faux pas that Jesus breaks through that. And he's intent upon doing it. He rises up from the table. He takes off his cloak. He wraps an apron around himself. And he gets down on the ground and washes the disciples' feet. A couple of things are important in that scene. You know, we're told all were not, all were were, were, were not clean. And he said he meant that for Judas. It's one thing that always strikes me as well. Judas was in the room at the time. In the Gospel of John, he leaves a little later. So Jesus washed the feet of his betrayer. He washed the feet of Judas. He gave himself even to Judas in that way. He's so vulnerable. Judas already knew what he was about, what he was going to do. I often wonder, what did he feel like when Jesus was being so vulnerable? The lamb led to the slaughter, offering himself to Judas, even in his sinfulness and his pride. And then he comes to Peter, also he knew, would deny him, as we heard, of course. Peter's resistance. On one level, it's an absolute resistance that's because this will not happen. You are not going to do this to me. You are the rabbi, the teacher, the Lord. You're not going to wash my feet. It's not going to happen. Sorry. You shall never wash my feet, he says to Jesus. Jesus says, I have to. If you don't, if I don't, wash you. You cannot share my life. You know, I think that, I think that Jesus in that vulnerability was just a little bit too much for Peter. I think he couldn't comprehend on a certain level that Jesus would love him that much, that Jesus would truly give himself to him. He just wasn't ready for that. It was a level of intimacy with the Lord that I think he was resistant to. He was pushing back on it. Perhaps because he did know his weakness. He was conscious of his unworthiness. You're never going to wash my feet. I'm not worth, I'm not worthy to have you do that. Of course he's not. None of us would be. But Jesus says, I have to, I have to get into your life in this way to give myself to you so that you would be redeemed, so that you can have everlasting life. You need to accept the gift of my love. Brothers and sisters, every time we receive the precious body and blood of the Lord, isn't Jesus so vulnerable? He lets himself become these humble elements of bread and wine. So vulnerable, so fragile so delicate, so easily ignored, and at times sadly even mocked. But yet he takes that risk so that we could receive him, so that we could receive the gift of his love in this extraordinary way and be transformed by it. Jesus does say to Peter, You won't understand, you don't understand this now, but you will. When you have to give your life, you'll look back and you'll say, I remember when Jesus did this. I need to do that. That's who I need to be. I need to wash the feet. And Jesus says that to them. I who am Lord and Master, I've given you an example so that you, as I have done, so you you will do to each other. You must wash each other's feet. 
He tells his apostles, he tells all Christians for all time. The Eucharist, my body and blood, transforms you to live like me. As we reflect on this incredible gift tonight, two things, I think, to ponder. First is, can, can we truly let Jesus into our lives on that deeper level? I, I sort of sympathize with Peter a bit, because we're not the same when we let the Lord in on a deeper level of our lives. Can we let him wash our feet and so give us himself and transform us? And what does that transformation look like? This is the second thing, I think, to ponder. How are we called to let the Eucharist transform us a bit more this Easter? Could we even wash the feet of Judas? And what does that mean for us? Who is that person? If not literally, but figuratively or spiritually, that I need to reach out to in love? Be generous as Jesus is generous beyond imagining. To let that precious blood on the lips of believers, which saves us, transform us into the likeness of the Lamb himself. To let us be transformed, to be the servant, to give of ourselves in imitation of Jesus.
Brothers and sisters, as we enter into the Passover of the Lord, let us intercede on behalf of all in the name of Jesus, our teacher and Lord. For the church, the household of faith redeemed by the blood of the lamb, may this celebration of the Paschal Triduum bring deliverance and new life. Lord, in your mercy, the world loved so much by God that he gave his only Son. May divine grace touch the hearts of those who serve the false gods of power and greed. Lord, in your mercy, For those suffering because of the scourge of war and hate, may the compassion of Christians extend God's peace and healing to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those afflicted by indifference and selfishness, may the community of believers ease their burdens through works of charity and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, us gathered in remembrance of Christ, may these holy celebrations increase our joy and hope as we follow our Savior's example of sacrificial love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Father, hear the people you have claimed as your own. Stir our hearts by the humble example of the Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Set amor, Deus ibi est. Ubi carita set amor, Deus ibi est. I alone Christ be.
pray, my sisters and brothers. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Domino, Deus abao, pleni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua, hosanna in et benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, hosanna in to you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all who, who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, 
James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole church, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for the salvation, for our salvation, and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, 
Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these gifts, O Lord, these things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Sisters ate manna in the desert, but this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and
and Christ will raise you up on the last day. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Stay here.
possible.